Uh, hello, we're going to uh, start now a discussion on the binomial theorem and um, we are also going to do a worked example. Actually, really the most of the most of the emphasis in this video will actually be on the worked example. It actually won't be on the binomial theorem itself. All I'm going to do here is just going to review the binomial theorem, assuming that you already have been told what it's about, but I'll be glad to review it again. And it's where you take any binomial, like here, raise it to some power. Who knows what power that is? We'll just call it n. And each term is expanded according to n choose zeros or n choose some number as the coefficient. And whatever that number is depends on the term. The terms are in order 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 indefinitely up until the value of n. So you can have n choose 0, n choose 1, n choose 2 as your coefficients and somewhere in the middle you're going to have n choose k and at the end you're going to have n choose n. The um, the exponents on a and b here shall be a to the n, a to the n minus 1, a to the n minus 2, and so on and so on in sequence. And in the middle you'll have a to the n minus k, and at the end really a to the 0. Now b starts off as b to the 0, but then you get b to the 1, b squared, b cubed, b to the 4th. Somewhere in the middle you get b to the k, and at the end you get b to the n. So the numbers all go in sequence, everything goes in a pattern, n choose 0, n choose 1, n choose 2, whatever n is, is whatever this exponent is. Okay. And the binomial theorem is based on this sort of thing. And uh, the formula, of course, for the binomial theorem that uh, causes uh, students a bit of confusion, it shouldn't really, because this formula really is meant to help you. I know a lot of students that can say, hey, you know, um, you can just, you, I know the patterns on a to the n and b to the n, or a to the n and a to the n minus k and b to the k and stuff like that, uh, but I don't know the binomial theorem, but a lot of times when I, I hear them explain it, they are really restating the binomial theorem. That's exactly what they're doing. And r is going from 0 to n, and here we have n choose r, a to the n minus r, b to the r. So this is this is basically will cover all of the numbers, all of the terms in any binomial expansion. There's one thing that I should include when I say this, and that R can be any number inclusive between zero and n. So R is allowed to be any number between zero and n, and of course R belongs to the set of integers. All right? which is kind of like a stylized Z for integers. I know a lot of people use I for integers, big I. Um, I think Z, I think I is something else, but uh, Z would be the, from what I could tell from most books I've used, um, what stands in for integers. So the formula is like this, R is any integer between zero and N. In fact, it is all of the integers between 0 and n, and that means that the binomial expansion of a plus b to the n will have n plus 1 terms because we have to count 0 as one of the terms, and that is n choose 0. And what is n choose 0? n choose 0 is always 1. n choose n is always 1. Well, n choose 0 is 1 because if you have n objects in front of you and you choose none, there's only one way to do that. Or if there's n objects in front of you and you choose all of them, there's only one way to do that. So that's why these are 1. So now, uh, let's now work on a problem involving the binomial theorem. And that shall be this kind of problem, if we can allow the camera to get used to the light here. I have no idea why it did that. So. 3x squared plus 2 root x to the power 5. Okay, big scary binomial. That is a binomial there. And we could not lose too much meaning by saying, I don't know, 2 root x minus 3x squared to the power 5. Maybe some of you are saying, gee, why couldn't you write it this way? But to be honest with you, 
uh, I could get away with writing it this way. It's not going to hurt it by writing it that way. So I'm going to I'm going to keep it in this form, the this kind of awkward looking form, um, and to show you that it's not awkward at all. Now we let a equal negative three x squared, and let b equal two root x. Okay, so I make some let statements, and I'm going to treat this as a plus b to the power five. Now maybe your teacher taught you how to do this, but you know what? I got I can do you one better. We already have a formula that takes care of all this. We're going to use this to expand that. And later on, we'll replace all our a's and our b's with these and work out the exponents. Okay, so a plus b to the power 5 equals, this will be 5 choose 0, a to the 5th. And that follows in line with the first term, n choose 0. So we have a plus b to the power 5. So this, these n's are all going to be 5's. And we'll go all the way up to 5 choose 5. So this is not going to be very long, as, as this formula would suggest. So that's 5 choose 0 to the power 5. We're going to add that to 5 choose 1. a to the power 4 times b. So notice we go down by 1 power from a to the 5th to a to the 4th. And the b goes from b to the 0 to b to the 1. Our next term, 5 choose 2, a cubed b squared. Notice that the sums of the exponents on a and b always add up to 5. That's important that you notice that. If they don't add up to 5, you're doing something wrong. And when you start replacing a and b with that, they'll never add up to 5 because, look, the exponents are all messed up up here. But as long as you're working with a's and b's and you're working for with a binomial in this form, all of your exponents will add up to n. Okay, let's continue. 5 choose 3. a squared b cubed plus 5 choose 4. a b to the fourth time and plus 5 choose 5 b to the fifth. There you have it. The only thing is, we're not even close to being done. First of all, we got to work out all these coefficients. This five choose whatever business has to be all worked out. You have to maybe work them out on your calculator or whatnot. But either way, it's got to be worked out. And then, and then we got to think about replacing a and b with what we had them stand for in our let statements because we got to work out those coefficients as well. Well, anything choose 0 is just 1, so we just have a to the fifth here. 5 choose 1, if we choose one object out of five objects, well, that's going to be 5. So that's going to be 5, a to the fourth b. Uh, 5 choose 2, well, if you think about it, well, you know what, I'm going to 5 choose 2, that's you, you have five ways of choosing your first object, four ways of choosing your sec second object, five times four is 20. And then you, um, because of the rearrangements of the two objects you chose don't matter, then you divide by two. So 20 divided by two is 10. A cubed, B squared. Five choose three is the same as five choose two because if I choose two objects, it's the same thing as leaving two objects out which is what 5 choose 3 is. If you think about it, you're choosing 3, and that leaves 2 behind. That's the same thing as choosing 2. So that also gets a 10. a squared b cubed plus 5 choose 4. Again, like 5 choose 1, we're choosing 1 in 5 choose 1. In 5 choose 4, we're choosing 4, but we're leaving 1 out. Same thing. 5 a b to the fourth. Finally, 5 choose 5. If we choose everything from all of the objects, there's only one way to do that. And so 1 times b to the fifth. And there is our polynomial that still is 
not completely processed, but you can see it taking shape. Now we've gotten rid of all our, our n choose r's because that you know if you leave it like this, this is not really very good. It's it's better to work out your n choose r's. Now I chose an easy one, you know, where I had to the power five. I could have chosen to the power seven. Like to the power five, you could always check out your answer using Pascal's triangle. Um, and I didn't do that. I'm just using some kind of you know, if you if you work out n choose r on your calculator, you can do that. But also you can also if you can use some kind of common sense approach, you can do that too. All right, so that is the story so far. I'm going to put that to one side and well, actually I'm not. I'm going to now continue on from that uh, from that sheet and I'm just going to write another equal sign. And I'm going to now replace a with negative 3x squared. Well, a, a to the fifth then is negative 3x squared all to the fifth. Don't worry about the exponents now. Just plug things in. That's all you need to do on this step. Just plug it in. We got a 5 here, so put the 5 down here. We have a to the fourth, so that's negative 3x squared to the fourth times b. Now b was 2 root x. Okay, b is 2 root x, so then we're also multiplying by 2 root x. Notice we're running out of room on this line. In fact, I'm, I fear that we may need to write this on a few lines. So I'm going to do plus 10 negative 3x squared cubed times 2 root x all squared plus 10 negative 3x squared squared times 2 root x cubed. Okay, so like I say, it's taking shape. We're going to, a little hard to read on that side. If I, for some reason, the images on this side of the display seem to not process very well, but you can see here, I just wrote 2 root x all cubed. All right, so that was the last term. Uh, well, not quite the last term, but the last term of that line up there. So I still have to add 5ab to the fourth, so that's 5 times negative 3x squared times 2 root x to the power 4 plus b to the fifth. So that's 2 root x to the power 5. There you go. Now, again, don't be scared of this. This is not really that bad. Work things out one at a time. Okay, take a deep breath, work things out one at a time. Do the easy stuff first. What I would do is I would work out, for me, I'd leave the exponents for later and think about the coefficients. Okay, so if we think about the coefficients then, um, we're in a situation here where we actually have, um, if I just divide this work out here and I'll just um, write something else over here. If I have a plus, sorry, not a plus b, but a times b to the power c, then that's like a to the c times b to the c, okay? And that's the kind of situation we have here. This is like we have something multiplied by something else and everything is raised to the power. That means each of these factors, the a and the b, each get the power c. And that means that coefficient negative 3 gets to be to the power 5. Okay, so you gotta, you got to keep that in mind. So, um, again, if you uh, get your calculator, well, I got my calculator. Uh, this is not a calculator that I particularly am fond of because it makes the math a little too easy because it allows for actual fractions. But if I have negative 3 and I raise it to the power 5, you can't see it very well in the display, but I get negative 243. So that's negative 243. And I'm leaving, I'm thinking about the exponents later, even though some of these exponents are pretty straightforward. What I want to do is I want to uh, be able to work out one thing at a time. Negative 3 to the power 4 is like 3 times 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 
and we have another negative 3 times negative 3 which is another 9 that's like 81 a positive 81 as well and we have 5 times 2 is 10 81 times 10 is 810 and this is x squared to the fourth times root x like I say some of these some of these exponents are straightforward some of them um, again well they're straight they, they're all straightforward ultimately but you have to uh, like I say leave work things out one step at a time so we have 810 times this monstrosity which we still have to work out we'll leave it for later so plus now negative 3 to the power 3 is negative 27 times 10 is negative 270 times well times 4 negative 270 times 4 is negative 10 or well, negative 10080 negative 1080 so really I shouldn't have a plus sign here maybe I should have a minus sign negative 1080 and this is x squared to the power 3 times root x all squared plus now notice this negative 3 gets squared negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 9 or positive 9 sorry and this 2 this 2 gets raised to the power 3 that's 8 uh, that's 8 so 9 times 8 is 72 times 10 is 720 and uh, notice this x squared is squared so I'll do that and this root x is cubed and we'll just leave it that way for now and we'll go on to the rest of it well 2 to the fourth is 16 16 times 5 is 80 80 times negative 3 is negative 240 x squared and root x to the power 4 like I say we'll work out the exponents in a separate step 2 to the fifth is 32 so plus 32 root x all to the fifth so it's starting to take shape as I'm saying and notice that the signs are alternating negative positive negative positive negative positive and We'll, um, we'll now work out the exponents. So minus 243, x to the 2 times x, x to the 2, 5 by itself 5 times is x to the power 10. We have an order 10 polynomial here. Okay. Um, what else have we got? Well, how about plus 810? And what about these x's? 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 half is 8 and a half. Well, we can say 17 halves. So x to the 17 over 2. Okay. And um, what about this one? Negative 1080. Minus 1080. x to the 2 times 3 is 6. Root x squared is just x. Well, 6 plus 1 is 7, x to the 7th. Plus, what about this one? 720, x to the squared all squared is x to the 4th. So that's 720. Oops, 720. x to the 4th, root x cubed is x to the 1 and a half. So 4 plus 1.5 is 5.5. That's 11 halves. x to the 11 halves minus 240. Well that's x squared root x to the power 4 is x squared x squared plus x x squared well times x squared is really x to the fourth so that's minus 240 x to the fourth and root x to the fifth is like saying x to the two and a half or x to the five halves so that's plus 32 x to the five halves and this my friends is the expansion of the original function uh, 3x squared 
plus 2 root x all to the power 5. So that's what we ended up with. That's 720 there, just to remind you. And you can see the rest of it. Okay. The original question was this. Negative 3x squared plus 2x. 2 root x to the power 5. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's one example. And um, what I would like to do is to do a... Uh, a different kind of question where we give the last six terms of some polynomial. Now sometimes there's some polynomials that I'm afraid are impractical to fully expand. So what if you were told to give the last, the last six terms of x to the minus 3 minus x squared to the power of let's say 17 okay so we can see that that's going to be a respectably large or long at least polynomial but we don't want every term we only want the last six terms okay so that means we got to work from n choose n backwards six times. So we want 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, that's 5, down to 12. Okay? These are our values for r. Okay? Those are our values for r. 17 is the n. Okay? If you look at it that way. So, to try to solve it, you do uh, 17 choose 12 and you follow the equation for the binomial theorem for the binomial expansion and I'm trying to find it here doesn't look like I have it here looks like it grew legs and walked but really the um, for one thing, uh, I, I haven't really I haven't really fully elucidated this yet. Uh, we're going to let x cubed or x to the minus three be a, and b be x negative x squared. Okay, b is going to be negative x squared, and a is going to be x to the minus three. So. When we do our first term then, we got a to the n minus r, if you remember. a to the 17 minus 12. Well, 17 minus 12 is 5. And b, that's going to be b to the 12. Because this will always determine the value of b. Plus 17 choose 13. a to the 4th, b to the 13. Notice these all have to add up to 17. Plus... 17, choose 14, choose 14, a cubed, um, b to the 14, plus 17, choose 15, a squared, b to the 15, plus 17, choose 16, a b to the 16 plus 17 choose 17 finally a uh, sorry b to the 17 okay those are your last six terms of a binomial expansion of a plus b to the 17 but of course we have some work to do because we need to work out all this a n choose r stuff and it's not something that you can do the math in your head you'll need your calculator for this so and some of these are going to be fairly big numbers. For example, 17 choose 12 is going to be 6,188. A to the 5th, B to the 12th, plus 17 choose 13, 2380. 
a to the fourth b to the thirteenth plus seventeen choose fourteen six hundred and eighty a cubed b to the fourteen plus seventeen choose fifteen is a hundred and thirty six a squared b to the fifteen plus seventeen choose sixteen is going to be seventeen i believe if i'm not mistaken oops i did a hundred and sixteen there but it's seventeen a b to the sixteen and finally seventeen choose seventeen is just one and that's going to be plus b to the seventeen and that is that is your um, um, that is a partial expansion, a partial answer. The question is still half done. We still have to replace our a's and our b's. So recall that a was x to the minus 3 and b was negative x squared. So we need to now we need to now replace this with the appropriate a's and b's. So this is 6188 x to the minus 3 to the 5th, because that's what a is, times b to the 12th. So that's negative x squared to the 12th plus 2380 a to the 4th b, <laughs> what am I doing? x to the negative 3 to the 4th, what a mess, and b to the 13th, that's negative x squared to the 13. <coughs> okay, so, and uh, we keep going, 680, x to the minus 3 to the cubed, and then negative x squared to the, um, to the 14th, plus 136, x to the negative 3 squared times negative x squared to the 15th. And I'm going to have to continue on another sheet of paper. Okay. Plus <coughs> 17 x to the minus 3 times negative x squared to the 16 plus uh, 100 uh, sorry plus just b to the 17th so that's negative x squared to the power of 17 okay and that's the last term okay so now uh, we need notice that all the coefficients for the original binomial was 1 and either one or negative one and so there isn't much to work out in terms of coefficients except to where to place the plus and minus signs and what we'll do is I think this time we'll work out the exponents first and then work out the coefficients so this is going to be 6188 x to the minus 3 to the power of 5 you multiply 5 times negative 3 that's x to the minus 15 and 2 times 12 is 24, so we have negative, uh, negative 1 to the 24, I'm going to separate them, times x to the 24. And, um, okay, so that's, that's our first term. The next term is going to be 2380. And you know what, I'm just going to add 2380. And this is x to the minus 3 times 4, so that's x to the minus 12, times negative, negative 1 to the 13, times x squared to the 13, which is x to the 26. Okay, so it looks like I can only put two terms per row here, uh, like I did before. So 680 times x, x cubed 
times x to the minus 3 times 3, so 3 times minus 3 is x to the minus 9. And this is 2 times, well, negative 1 to the 14 times, well, this is x squared to the 14th, which is 2 times 14, that's x to the 28. And to that we add 136. So that's 136. And this is going to be x to the negative 6 times negative 1 to the 15 times x to the 30th. 2 times 15 is 30. Plus 17, and this is x to the minus 3. Negative, this is negative 1 to the power 16. x squared to the 16th is x to the 32nd. And um, that's that. And then plus x squared to the 17. So this is negative 1 to the 17. And this is x to the 34th. And sorry about that. That's what it looks like, folks. Um, I know down toward the bottom it gets really blurry. But up here it's not so bad. Okay. All right. So we still need to work out the exponents because we got x in two places on all of my terms. So <clears throat> notice we maybe at the same time we can decide whether the term is going to be positive or negative by looking at the 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 exponent on minus 1. Well, minus 1 is to the power of 24, which means that it's going to be positive because 24 is an even number. So we get positive 6,188 x to the minus 15 times x to the 24, well, you add them, and you end up with x to the 9, because 24 minus 9 is, or 24 minus 15, right, is 9. Okay, and um, so that takes care of that first term. Plus, well, we don't know if it's plus or minus yet. Let's take a look at the exponent. Negative 1 to the 13 makes it actually a minus. And so we get minus 2380. Okay. <coughs> x to the minus 12 times x to the 26. Well, that's 26 minus 12. That makes x to the 24. So that's 2380x to the 24th. Um and we go further, 680, um, the negative 1 is to the power 14, so it's going to be a positive 680, 28 minus 9, 28 minus 9 is um, 19, so x to the 19th, and we keep going. This minus 1 to the 15 makes this term negative, so minus 136. And 30 minus 6 is 24, x to the 24th. And a plus, and that's because negative 1 is to the 16, so making this positive. Positive 17. 32 minus 3 is x to the 29th. And finally, we get negative x to the power 34. And I believe that is now fully solved. And we started, remember, with um, we started with this polynomial here, this one, and we ended up with this expansion. And uh, just for clarity, I'll just show it to you, show the whole thing to you. All right. And uh, that is two rather worked examples of typical questions that. Uh, show up in tests uh, regarding uh, things like the um, binomial theorem.